watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Well, hello there. I am Brenda Jarrett Franklin. Yes, I am Minister Brenda Jarrett Franklin. I want to welcome you to Expecting Women's Ministry. Yes, this is not a new ministry. It has always been going on, but God has seen fit to open up another door so that we can meet, meet more of his people with the word of God. We are talking about prayer. Yes, we are. I am ministering prayer, teaching us how to pray. There are two vital things that are very important in our lives that we need to implement, and that is prayer and that is exercising, living healthy lives. Yes, today we're going to be talking about both of them, but I want you to know that prayer is very important. I want you to continue to join me here. If you're serious about getting your prayer all the way from your mouth, your heart, to the heart of God. You need to tune in and be with me because you cannot go to God no any kind of way. Did you hear what I said? We cannot get into the presence of God no any kind of way. That's why so many of our prayer meetings, if you go to prayer meeting, that seems to be the smallest meeting in the church. But people say that they're praying. We have to learn how to pray. The Bible tells us we have to pray without seasoning. Yes, we have to pray without seasoning. You can pray without seasoning. You said, I cannot pray without seasoning. Oh, yes, you can. The Bible tells us pray without seasoning to give thanks to God always. Yes, there's always something to pray about, but we have to learn prayer. You know what? When the disciples was with Jesus, the disciples were with Jesus, they saw him heal the lame. They saw him open up blinded eyes. They saw him unstop dead ears. They even saw him raise the dead. They saw him feed a multitude, but you know what they asked him? Over in the book of Luke 11 and 1, let me tell you what the disciples asked him. The disciples asked Jesus one thing. That's one thing that they wanted to know. And it came to pass, it says that, and it came to pass that as he was praying, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased from praying, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus did not tell him, just talk. No, prayer is not just talking. It is taught. You have to learn how to pray. He said, teach us how to pray. So if you're interested in learning how to pray and knowing that your prayers have reached the heart of God, you need to continue to be with me so that we can learn how to pray. Also over in the book of Mark 1 and 35, you know, Jesus was one. He got up early in the morning, Mark 1, 35. It says here, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and, and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. Yes, he did. Jesus had to pray and talk to the Father before his day begun. What about us? We have to get up early in the morning and seek the Father. Go to the Father in prayer. I always say, before the street lights go off, I am praying and asking God to show me what it is that he wants me to do today. Show me what it is where he wants want me to go on today. If you're going to learn how to pray, you're going to have to get into the word of God because a lot of people, they think they're praying, but they're not really praying. God will not hear our prayers if we live a raggedy life. Your life have to be clean. Who can stand in his holy place except for those who have clean hands and a pure heart, has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfulness? 
happening. We as people of God, we can change things. You know why I know we can change things? Because Second Chronicles tells us that we can change things. That's right. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says to us, If my people, which are called by my name, or you call by his name, he said, shall humble themselves. We have to be humble. We have to live a humble life. Quit being so bigoted just because you got the car, just because you got the nice home, just because you got the cottage, just because you got the education, just because you got the money. You have to be humble. The Bible said humble is the way. So he said we have to humble ourselves. I'd rather humble myself. Then let God humble me. Did you hear what I said? I'd rather humble myself than let God humble me. He said, humble yourself. And then he said, pray. That's when he's going to hear. He said, and pray, and pray. We have to pray. And then seek his face. Look, we have to seek the face of God. Not the hand of God, the face of God. And how are we going to do that? Through the word of God. We have to seek his face. The Bible tells us, seek his face. That's what he wants us to do. And then listen what else it says here in the second Chronicles 7, 14. It says, and turn from our wicked ways. He talking about his people, which are called by his name. Evidently, we have some wicked ways that he wouldn't have said that. It's so many people in the church. We call ourselves Christians, but we have some wicked ways. We have nasty attitudes, don't want to talk to certain people because they don't look look like us because they don't dress like us. You see what I'm saying? Turn from our wicked ways. What's going on in your mind? What kind of wickedness is in your mind? What kind of wickedness is in your heart? He want us to turn from our wicked ways. We as Christian people, some of us have the most nastiest attitude, but yet I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. That's why the prayers are not being answered. We're not humble. We're not seeking him when we have wicked ways. But if we turn from our wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven. Then, he said, then there's something we must do before God will hear us. Then, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. God is a forgiving God. He said, I will forgive their sins. Yes, he will. And you know what? I, I I'm, I'm grateful to God that he will forgive our sins because he told us, he told us over in the book of John, he said, confess your sin. In other words, you said, if you lied, you lied. You tell him you lied. He heard it. If you slept with somebody else's husband, you say it. If you slept with somebody else's wife, you have to say it. Whatever it is that you're doing that is sinful, God will not hear your prayer. Yes, no, he will not hear your prayer. He said he will forgive you. Confess your sins. That's what he said. Confess your sins. In other words, I have to say it. He said, I will be faithful. I will be just. And I will clean you from all unrighteousness. But we have to say it. And we're not saying it because he don't know it. We're saying it for ourselves. You, I remember the time when I had to kept, keep on confessing the same thing, asking the Lord to help me with the same thing. I got shame. I got embarrassed. I was shamed. To, and see, that's what the enemy want us to do, not say it and make us think we're all right. God will clean you from all unrighteousness. And then look what he said. He said, and will heal their land. God will heal our land. Yes, he will. Yes, I'm not talking about the world. Yes, we pray for people all around the world because God is an omnipresent God. But he said he'll heal their land, our land, right here where I am, the United States of America. This is our land. Yes, we're going to pray for people all around the world because God wants us to pray for people all around the world. But he said, I'll heal their land. There's so much violence going on in our land, our children are being gunned down at a young age. Our children are in gain. The enemy wants our children at a young age. But we have to learn how to pray. We have to learn how to go before God. Like I said, you cannot live no any kind of way and get into the presence of God. He is not going to hear us. So if we're going to be serious about our prayer life, 
I need you to join me. I need you to join me right here. A lot of people, you're right there. You're, you're at church. You're going through church. You're doing church. You're, you're preaching in the pulpit. You're ushering on the usher board. You're the youth pastor. You, you youth teacher, Sunday school teacher, Bible teacher, singing in the choir, greeters at the church, parking lot attendants, the janitor in the church, but you don't have a prayer life. Did you hear what I said? I did not say pray. I said a prayer prayer life, a life of prayer where you have a connection with God. When you leave out your prayer room, you'll know that God heard you and that God is going to answer you. But you have to have a prayer life. We can't just go to God when we want something. I don't want to just hear from my children, my son and my daughter, when they just want something from me. No, I want to hear from my children every day. Even if my children send me a text and just send me a kissy face. You see what I'm saying? That's what God wants. He wants to hear from us. He told us in his word. He told us in his word. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. We're walking around burdened down. We're so burdened down we can't even pray. God told us in his word. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Yes, he will. What is your desire? What do you want from God? What have you been talking to God about, but yet you have not gotten it? It could be your life. It could be your lifestyle. Like I said, just because you in the church, that doesn't mean nothing. The Bible it's, it's nothing about being in the church. The church is a place of worship. The house of prayer is a place of worship. We're the church. When we get there, the church has arrived. Yes, when we get there, the church has arrived. Other than that, you go by my. If I go by my church right now, my my place of worship right now is just a house of worship. It's probably not a car on the parking lot. But when we gather to, together there this evening, because we are going to be there this evening. Yes, we are at 111 West Little York Road. We're going to be there praying. That's right, at 6 o'clock. Then the church has come in. The church has come together to pray. The church has come together to do Bible study. We have to learn how to pray. And in order for us to learn how to pray, we have to know the Word of God. Do you know the Word of God? Do you know how to go to God? A lot of us do not know how to go to God. Yes, that's right. I'm going to look at my notes here because I do have notes here because I cannot remember all of this. But guess what? I have my notes right here. Yes, to just help me out uh, uh, on what we are talking about. The first thing as, as, a, as a child of God, as people which are called by his name, we have to learn how to invest quality time with the father. That's right. I said invest. Don't be in such a hurry to run out of your house into a mean, dark, evil world and, 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 and pray on the way. I know that happens sometimes. It has happened to me. You know, what? Well, well, time has caught up with me and then I have to pray on my way uh, uh, to where I'm going, on my way to work or on my way to church or wherever I'm going to the house of worship or where I'm going. But you'll be sure. Get up in time to invest some time in the word of God. Invest some time praying to the Father on a daily basis. He told us, pray without ceasing. I can, I go in my, they ask me to pray at church and they know if they ask me to pray at church. I can't help it because I enjoy prayer. I enjoy prayer and I enjoy teaching prayer. I am long-winded sometimes because once I get into the presence of God, I'm talking about the maker, the creator of heaven and earth and all mankind to get into his presence. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome and amazing. But we have to learn how to do it. Yes, we do. Like I said, invest some time studying the word of God. I didn't say read. Keep in mind, I did not say read. A lot of people are reading the word of God, but the word of God tells us in 1 Timothy, it tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A lot of people try to use the word of God and they have the words all mixed up because they're not studying the word of God. So you have to study the word of God. Uh, you you want to change in your children? Your children going wild? Pray for your children. Quit trying to beat them down with your mouth. Your mouth is not going to get it. 
you're going to have to go to God in prayer, especially if they're grown children. My children are grown children. They are very grown children. They are on their own. But you know what? When they were infants and I brought them home, I gave them to the Lord. And I have not tried to take them back ever since. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. They might get off a track. But I know that my children are coming back. I know what I instilled it in my children. If you have lived a life before your children, if you have taught your children the word of God, then don't you worry about that. Quit trying to tell them uh, what to do. Be a living example to them. That's what people want to see. They want to see you live the word. That's what they're looking at. And another thing, if you're having problems in your marriage with that spouse, I'm a living witness. All you got to do is pray. I tried to change my husband with my mouth. I found out that I couldn't do it because one thing I had to find out, excuse me, one thing I had to find out is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. No, I was not fighting with him. It was the enemy himself. It was the devil himself. We're looking for the devil to come with a red suit on and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, and pointed ears and a long tail. No, the devil is looking for a body. That's what he, that's what he sought when he first got here over in Genesis. All he needed was a body. So he used the body of a snake to get into Eve's head. Yes, he did. And so now he's using a body. You gonna let him use your body? You gonna let him use your mouth? You gonna let him use your mind? No, I will not. Once I found out that's what it was, that that's who I was talking to, I began to talk to, to the devil and I put the devil on the run. But how can I put him on the run if I don't know the word of God? Huh? You cannot put him on the run if you don't know the word of God. Don't be afraid of the enemy. You let the enemy know. That when, when he would show up in my husband, I see him showing up. I would tell the devil, I said, when my husband get back home, I'll talk to him because I see you showing up right now. So there's a way that we have to, we have to fight the enemy. And that is with the word of God. Through prayer, through prayer. Do you want your finances on track? Do you want your finances back on track? Hey, there's a plan in the word of God. Do you give? Huh? I'm asking you. Do you give? The Bible said give and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Yes, it will. You know what he told Joshua? I know you working. I know you got to, I know you working and trying to go to church and do this. And it looked like you still not getting anywhere. The Bible said, look what it says in Joshua 1 and 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. The Bible says all that is written therein. For then, once you do that, he said, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You want a prosperous life. You want to be successful in, in life. You need to get the word of God into your life. You need to have a prayer life. Not just pray, a prayer life. When you get ready to go on that job, and you want to uh, uh, be a light to them, you have to pray about that we the Bible tells us because sometimes you know sometimes we like we like lizards we like chameleon whatever we're around that's the color we change do you hear what I'm saying if I if, if I if I'm over here with these folks I'm gonna act like these folks if I'm right here with these people I'm gonna act like these people if I'm over here with the Christian people I'm gonna act like the Christian people that that's like a chameleon you, you, you're not stable you, you, you're changing but the Bible tells us we're to meditate in the Word of God both day and night. Day and night. When you lay down, you're thinking about God. When you get up, you're thinking about God. But you know what? You're not able to do that if you don't know the Word of God. Yes, you have to know the Word of God. The Word of God. The Bible tells us, Thy word, hide it in your heart. Why? That I might not sin against God. The word of God tells us, your word is 
It's a lamp unto my feet. It'll show you where to go. It's a light unto my path. Yes, it will. You can use the word of God because the Bible said the word of God, it is sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes, it will. That's why I said if you want to cut them, you cut them with the word of God. Yes, the word of God is going to do just what it says it's going to do. You know what? I I, 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 I am really enjoying this on this uh, on this afternoon, but look, what I want to also let you know what we're going to be doing. We're not only going to be talking about prayer. Like I said, it's two vital things that we are going to be talking about. The other thing that we're going to be talking about is exercise. Yes. We have to exercise, live a healthy life. That's right. You want a, you, you want a healthy life? Hey, you're going to have to exercise. You're going to have to invest some time in prayer. Invest some time in exercising your body, your temple. Uh, over in the book of uh, uh, Romans 12 and 1, look what it says in Romans 12, 12 and 1, because it is very important that we exercise our body. Over in the book of uh, Romans 12 and 1, it says here, present your body. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. It's not acceptable. For us to be in a lot of pain, for us to be sick, for us to be slumped over, for us to be walking on kings and walkers and things. God is a healer, but you won't know that unless you know his word. You have to be obedient to the word of God. There's things that we have to do. We're praying and asking God, Lord, heal my body, heal my knee, heal my neck, heal my back. We're asking God to do it, but what are you doing? And you won't even get up and go for a walk. But we want God to be, to do everything. Join me exercising, sitting and, be, sitting and be fit. You don't even have to stand because I know some of us have challenges in life and we cannot stand. But you can still exercise. That will be acceptable unto God. Your body as a living sacrifice. Holy. We're going to live holy lives. We're going to live clean lives. We want to be acceptable uh, uh, unto God in the way that we live our bodies and in the thing and, and what we put in our bodies and how we live. You cannot eat and drink no any and everything. No, you cannot. Don't you know that God lives on the inside of us? His spirit is on the inside of us. So when you join me for exercise, I want you to be sure and have you a, a, a bottle of water. It is very important that we replenish the body with water. Yes, you have to drink the water. You're wondering why you have so many problems with your liver, have so many problems uh, 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 with UTIs. We have to drink the water. And I must say, I'm not one that, that that's happy about drinking water, but you know what? I know that it is necessary. So I have to do those things that are necessary necessary. Also, when you come on and join me, get you some weights. Look, my weights are old. They're very old. I've been had these two two pound weights for many years. I work out with two pound weights. You can work out with a two pound weight, one pound weight, one, two, three, four, but I would not go over a five pound weight. Yes, have you five pound weight so that you can use your weight while we're sitting and exercising the body, the temple of God. And also, you be sure and have you something to wipe that sweat. Girl, yes, you're going to have to wipe that sweat because I'm going to have a sweat. And that's right, working out, having a good time. Yes, we are. We're going to have a good time talking about prayer. We're going to have a good time uh, exercising our body. You know, like I, I like I said, we cannot just eat no any and everything. You don't have to go on a diet. Did you hear what I said? You don't have to diet. No, you do not. You don't have to diet. You are welcome to eat healthy. Yes, like he said, your body is, is a living sacrifice. It has to be holy, acceptable unto God, which is just our reasonable service. In other words, you still ain't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible tells us also, even at our very best, 
We're just a filthy rag in his eyesight. But you know what? God wants us to be healthy. That's why he is a healer. You have to know that he's a healer. So, like I said, cut out all that junk food. We, we don't have to have... I, I don't have to eat the whole pack of cookies. I can eat cookies one day. One day a week. You see what I'm saying? And it doesn't have to be the whole pack. We can cut back on things. We're not going to diet. Because I, t I, I tell you this. I've tried all the diets. They work for a little while. But what I found out is what work is what you cut back on. You hear what I'm saying? You have to cut back on it. You know what you eat too much of. Is it the chips? Is it the cookies? Is it the Cokes? Is it the sodas? Is it the tea? What is it? All you have to do is cut that back. And another thing that we're going to be talking about is fasting because that, that goes along with prayer. Now, when you begin to fast and pray, man, I tell you, you put the devil on the run. He's like, wow, she's fasting now. You can give up those chips. Lord, I love you more than I love a bag of chips. I'm going to give these chips up for 40 days. Did you hear what I said? You can fast those chips for 40 days. I've done it. That's right. Yes, I've done it. You can fast that candy for 21 days. I've done it. Yes, you can. You can do that. Give it up. And when we're fasting uh, uh, along with our exercise, if you desire to uh, fast, which, which I hope you do, you're putting the devil on the run. Yes, what you're saying to God is, Lord, I love you. I love you more than I love food. I love you more than TV. I love you more than social media. I put my social media aside. 21 days. Yes, yes I do. 21 days. That's right, because I love God more than that. Yes, I do. TV, no TV. And, 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 and while I'm away from that, then I'm investing more time with God. I can hear from God what God wants us to do. 1 Thessalonians 517, it's up there. Pray without ceasing. And you can do that too because I'm sure it's enough going on in your life that you can be praying about. And uh, just looking at the news itself. And it also says, in everything you give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Always give God thanks. Give him thanks always. Because you know what? He is a good God. He deserves to be praised. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so glad again that you have took time out to join us. I'm looking forward to us being together uh, as we exercise. Be sure and tell your family and friends about this station, Amazing Fire TV. Yes, we are on fire for God, reaching the world. People needs to be saved. Amen. And Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord God, we come realizing that thou art God and beside these there is no other. Father God, we understand that you are sovereign God, Master. Father God, we realize, Lord God, that you are omnipresent God, Master. That there's nowhere in this universe that we can go without you seeing us, Lord God. Father God, you say I know your mind. You say I know every word in your tongue before you ever even speak it. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you would just continue, Lord God, to teach us your word, Lord God. Teach us your way, Lord God. Teach us your will, Lord God. Father God, for we don't want to be conformed to this world, Master, but help us to be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds, Master. Help us to realize, Lord God, Father God, that we are the light of the world, Master. A city that sits on a hill that cannot be hid, Master. And then, Lord God, we come praying and asking you, Father, let us which wear your name, Lord God, your people which are called by your name. Go out and tell a dying world that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray and we ask him all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, to whom be the glory forever and ever. God bless you. Thank you. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.